G'day, here's another curriculum burst. This is a curious question for high schoolers, and it goes as follows. Let f1 of x equal the square root of 1 minus x, and for integers n bigger than or equal to 2, let fn of x equal fn minus 1, or the square root of n squared minus x. Oh heavens. Uh, Alright, if big n is the largest value of little n, for which the domain of f of little n is non-empty, now I'm just reading the words, I've lost track of what I'm actually trying to say or think about here. The domain of f big n is c. What is n plus c? Wow, you can tell I'm having an emotional react reaction to this one. This is very confusing. Um, all right, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let me just see if I can step back from this. I can see formulas for functions. In fact, I've got one function, f1 of x. Okay, I can handle that. It's the square root of 1 minus x. And then some complicated formula, I won't bother reading the details right now, but it tells me how to get the next function from a previous one, like fn of x is fn minus 1 of something else. And then something about domains. In fact, I want to go get the domain of fn to be what well, c, just a single point. All right. I haven't really taken the details, but I know the gist of the question wants me to look at the domains of these functions. This one, and the next one where it is, and the next one, and so on. And apparently something's going to happen with those domains. I feel I can at least do something. So what I'm going to do now is employ strategy number seven and just persevere with this, cross my fingers, and hope something comes of it. First of all, what's the domain of f1 of x? That's not too bad. As a square root sign, I need that quantity inside to be uh, non-negative. So I need 1 minus x to be bigger than or equal to 0. That tells me what x is less than or equal to 1. So the domain of this is all the numbers, real numbers, x, smaller than or equal to 1. Fine. All right. What next? All right, let's build up the functions. I guess we want f2. What is f2 of x? It is, by this weird question, but with weird definition, f1 of the square root, and what goes in? Uh, n is 2, n squared, so it's 4 minus x. All right. So I guess I want to look for the domain of this one. Hmm. Well, for starters, for this inner stuff to make sense, I at least need x to be uh, less than or equal to 4. I need that to be non-negative inside there. All right, so that's one condition. But also, I need this input itself to be part of the domain of f1. So I need this input to satisfy that condition. So it's like double-barreled conditions here. I need the square root stuff to make sense, and I need that whole input to also make sense for f1. So what have I got? It tells me that square root of 4 minus x better be less than or equal to 1. Uh, let me square everything. 4 minus x is less than or equal to 1. I'm not sure where this is going. Uh, that tells me x is bigger than or equal to 3. Ah. So to be in the domain of f2, x has to be bigger than 3, possibly equal to it, and smaller than equal to 4. So the domain of this one, and this is my scratch work, I'm not doing the full notation, but it's all values x that lie twixt 3 and 4. Okay, it's not a single point, but notice, ah, there was a whole like ray of points, that's now an interval of points, so it seems like the domains are narrowing down. Okay, okay, let's keep going. Uh, f3 is f2 of Square root of what? Uh, 3 squared. Square root of 9 minus x. Okay, let's look at the domain of this. Not sure where it's going, but we'll just plow on through. I need the square root stuff to make sense, so I need x to be less than or equal to 9, so I need the inner, inner stuff to make sense there. And I also need that input to satisfy being in the domain of f2. I need that input to fit that condition. Uh, I need 3 less than the square root of 9 minus x, less than or equal to um, 4. Alright, can't even read my own handwriting. Alright, now what? Uh, square everything. 9 less than or equal to 9 minus x less than or equal to 16. Uh, subtract 9, I guess. 0 is less than negative x is less than 7. Inequalities and negative signs always throw me. So um, negative x is less than 7, so x better be bigger than negative 7. And negative x is bigger than 0, so x better be uh, lower than 0. Okay, 0 is less than, uh, sorry, negative 7 is less than x less than 0. So I need this to be true x between negative 7 and 0, and x to also be less than 9. But actually, once I've got this condition going, the first condition satisfied as well. Ooh, ooh, now I'm worried. It looks like the domains become bigger, so now interval length 7 as opposed to interval length 1. All right, okay, well, I'm not feeling hopeful, but I'm going to just do it one more time because I don't know what else to do. Let's just persevere. f4 of x is f3 of the square root, whoops, of the square root of 4 squared, 16 minus x. All right, double barrel conditions. For this input to make sense, I need that stuff in the square root to be non-negative. I guess that means x has to be less than or equal to 16. And I need this input to be part of the domain of f3. So I need negative 7 less than or equal to the square root of uh, 16 minus x less than or equal to 0. Oh, 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 now 
I'm suddenly feeling good. Square roots. Square roots are always positive. There's no way a square root could be a negative number. In fact, the only way this condition can hold, I guess square roots could be negative, is for square root of 16 minus x to actually equal zero. That is, x will have to actually equal 16, which fits that condition as well. The domain of this one, f4 of x, is just the single point 16. Now, is that the answer to the question? Now this is feeling good. I'm actually going to stop there and uh, think about it. Maybe n, I guess that's that big n, is that what that big n is about? n is 4 and c is 16? Maybe that's the answer to the question. So think about that, mull on that. And if you think that is the answer, great, the answer is 20, n plus c. If you don't think it's the answer, well then, what is the answer? And when you're really ready to look at it, compare your answer with my answer in the essay that goes with this video. There's actually something, something to this. This is cool. All right, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.